everyone. Welcome back. It's been a little while. Um, I'll say that, you know, maybe a couple days, maybe a week or so. Um, at, at most, it's not been that long, I don't think. Uh, don't look at my last uploaded video. But anyway, um, yeah, so we're back and I thought I would kick off the new year with uh, something that a lot of people liked, um, which was my conspiracy theory um, videos. So I thought I'd kick it off with uh, three of uh, these conspiracy theories that I, I quite like, um, all coming from the same book as before, uh, Conspiracy Theories by Jamie King, The Guide to the World's Most Intriguing Mysteries. So we've got a new mic, we've got a new setup. Um, so yeah, let's see how well this goes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off with um, page 119, which is the Harp Project. Let's just find 119 here. There it is. Okay, so um, these aren't particularly long ones. Um, there's this, as well as being a sort of test for the voice and how well the mic is with the new setup and everything else. It's also a test on um, sort of, I don't know where I was going to go with it. Um, yeah, okay, I'm just going to, okay, ignore that. I'm just going to roll with it. I'm leaving all this in. This is fine. <laughs> um, okay, so the HARP project. So HARP is the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, a secret Star Wars era weapon employed by the US government to influence domestic and foreign affairs. HARP is officially known as a project to study the effects and uses of the ionosphere, the uppermost part of the atmosphere, as a radio wave based surveillance and communication tool. It is jointly funded by the US Air Force, the US Navy, the Defense Advanced Research Agency, and the University of Alaska. Located in a remote part of Alaska, the isolated and foreboding looking harp site is easily identifiable by the rows of mega antenna pointing out towards space. For some, the program has a more sinister application than those officially stated. One theory is that the surveillance and communication based research carried out at harp is just a small part of the activity taking place on the site and that the main focus of work has been the creation and development of the weather modification weapon systems. Theorists claim that the US government has used HARP to destabilize their enemies and advance their control all over the world. Oil supplies. Speculation has it that HARP has developed technology able to create huge earthquakes and that it has used this capability to trigger the Boxing Day Tsunami in 2004. But why would it want to fake such a devastating natural disaster? In order to, take, to gain control over the oil-rich province of the Ayak in Indonesia. What should be made of the rumours that a 2,000 strong force of US Marines was seen landing in immediately after the tsunami had struck? Was it to help facilitate the autonomy for the province so that it could negotiate a lucrative oil deal with the United States? Others believe that HARP lay behind the catastrophic Sichuan earthquake in China in May 2008, perhaps as part of an attempt to destabilize China's fast-growing economy. Office buildings in Shanghai's financial district were evacuated, as were a number of Beijing offices relating to the organization of the 2008 Olympics. Vital infrastructure, including airports, rail lines, 
including airports and rail lines, was interrupted or damaged. Another possible use theorists believe the US government may have for HARP is to manipulate domestic policy. Suggested examples include using the program to accelerate the droughts that have affected the US's breadbasket and using HARP to shoot down the Columbia Space Shuttle in 2003 in order to rein the ridiculously expensive space programs. And then again, Maybe HARP is just a mind control tool used to generate support for the US government's policies, or even a source of cheap electricity for the country's major oil companies. So, that is definitely a uh, quite a large conspiracy. Um, I remember growing up and learning about HARP, and um, the moment I started learning about it, um, there was a lot of conspiracy theories about it, um, which is always the case with official US projects. Um, a lot of people relate it to the fact that ever since HARP came into existence, there's been a lot more natural disasters. And um, obviously, the vast majority of those are most likely global warming related or just bad luck after HARP was made but people still link the two together, which is, yeah, it's a thing people do. <laughs> um, so we will uh, quickly move on to MK Ultra, which is a incredible uh, conspiracy, actually, and that is on page 181. So I'll try and find that one. There we go. MK Ultra. MK Ultra is believed to be a clandestine CIA mind control program. It was supposedly launched in the early 1950s and based on the work of Nazi scientists secretly smuggled into the US after World War II. Experimentation has apparently been carried out on unwitting citizens ever since. The MKUltra program was allegedly established by the CIA in 1953 in response to the use of mind control techniques on captive US prisoners by the Chinese, North Koreans, and Soviets. The US government also wanted to explore the possibility of influencing foreign leaders using mind control. It is said that the Cuban leader Fidel Castro was a very early target of this program. The science behind the project supposedly originated from research conducted by Nazi torture and brainwashing experiments, who had been covertly transported to the US following the trials at Nuremberg in 1945. This work helped further study into behaviour modification and interrogation carried out under various guises, including Project Chatter and Project Artichoke. Before a new title was coined for the experiments, MK Ultra. The name is an amalgamation of the term used by the CIA to describe the most secret classification of World War II intelligence, Ultra, and the prefix used by the agency's technical services division, MK. The main means by the CIA supposedly sought to control the minds of subjects was through the application of various drugs. LSD was an early favourite and was initially given to so-called volunteers before being given to unsuspecting human guinea pigs. However, unpredictable results forced researchers to abandon the substance. Heroin, morphine, temezepam, mescaline and marijuana were also used. Hypnosis was applied as another form of control. Soldiers are said to have been the subject of heavy experimentation throughout the 1950s to the 1970s. 
with drugs administered to make them both unflinching killing machines and impervious to torture and interrogation. It is speculated that the CIA trained assassins who could be put into a hypnotic trance, rendering them totally subservient to their master's wishes, but also incapable of recalling any act that they had committed. Some say that the CIA used this practice to dispose of John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert. MKUltra was first exposed in 1975 by the US Congress following investigations by the Church Committee and the Rockefeller Commission. Despite the inquiry, little was uncovered as it claimed that the CIA acted on growing concern over their activity becoming public knowledge, destroying their files relating to the program in 1973. Many thought that this marked the end of the MKUltra project, but others believed it merely went underground and became an invisible CIA program. Why would the CIA have turned their back on something that they'd spent almost three decades and over ten million dollars perfecting? One theory says that it was behind the People's Temple mass suicide in Jonestown, Guyana in 1978 which saw 918 people take their own lives. Another has it that the program was behind John Hinckley's attempt on the life of US President Ronald Reagan in 1981, a move fueled by the CIA's embarrassment that an actor taking power in the White House. It is also said that Michael Jackson was an MK Ultra slave and that his cosmetic surgery and increasingly erratic behaviour were results of CIA experimentation. Others believe that the CIA was using MK Ultra to control George W. Bush. His alcoholism gave the agency the perfect opportunity to implement their mind control techniques, and his decision to become dry provided a cover for the changes to his character resulting from the experiments. His subsequent embrace of Christianity was all a part of the alleged plot. The CIA was pulling Bush's strings throughout his presidency. The use of MKUltra could explain why Bush eagerly took the US into two wars where the chances of outright and long-lasting victory were slim, but the likelihood of bolstering the country's short-term oil supplies was high. Yeah, the project was and still is a hugely discussed conspiracy it's one of those ones that people never forget and when you think about conspiracy theories it's one of the main ones that shows up um it is very scary um that all of this is true like it's the mk ultra um theory isn't so much of a theory because it is confirmed it has been um, proven to have happened the conspiracy part comes in where we don't know if they're still doing it and for a lot of people that's the scary bit um, is that the CIA and different parts of the US government might still be doing this um, I highly doubt it um, I doubt that the US would be doing something like this because if they said that they've ended the program and then someone finds it or leaks the project again, then that would be absolutely devastating um, for them and whoever's in power at that time as well for not noticing it or um, allowing it to happen. Um, so I doubt they're still doing it, but it honestly wouldn't surprise me like at all if they were. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do quite like the MK Ultra project. Um, it reminds me of stuff like the Russian sleep experiment. Um, that one is also absolutely frightening. Um, although I don't believe it's true. I think it was a creepypasta somebody made, but similar vibes. Um, it's chemicals used on people to try and make them subservient or, uh, as it mentioned earlier, to make them essentially into super soldiers. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting one. Um, the next one I'm going to go over is the Phantom Time Conspiracy uh, on page 213, so we'll find that one now. Okay, so the Phantom Time Hypothesis. 
According to this hypothesis, which has been put forward by German historian Herbert Illig and taken up by many conspiracy theorists, the year 613 was followed directly by the year 911. And events between 1914 and 1911 have either been wrongly dated or did not happen at all. A fact which there has been systematic effort to cover up. The apparent reason for this is a conspiracy between the Holy Roman Emperor Otto III, Pope Sylvester II, and perhaps also the Byzantine Emperor Constantine. I don't know that Roman numeral VII, if someone in the comments could let me know. Who wanted to change the dating system so that they could be placed as central figures at that millennium. To do this involved rewriting history, including, apparently, inventing Charlemagne. There is a great deal of proof to support this hypothesis. Firstly, and coupled with the over-reliance of medieval historians on written sources, there is no real archaeological evidence that can be reliably dated to the time period 1914 to 90 uh, to 911. 16, did I say 16? to 6, 14, and 9, 11. Perhaps the strongest argument for this theory, though, is the relationship between the Julian and Gregorian calendars and the underlying solar tropical year. The Julian calendar was known to introduce a difference from the tropical year of around one day per century. And by the time that the Gregorian calendar was introduced in 1582, the Julian calendar should have created a discrepancy of 13 days. Instead, only 10 days needed to be introduced, suggesting that around three centuries had in fact never existed. Though there are arguments against this theory, such as the observations in ancient Chinese astronomy and the apparent lack of fabrication in the rest of the world's history, the phantom time would certainly explain why the era in question is known as the Dark Ages. So, that is probably the weirdest one um, on the list I have there. The whole idea that a handful of leaders managed to invent three centuries of time is uh, a little bit weird, because... There are a lot of people at that point, especially like it mentions in China, that were keeping excellent records of what was going on. Um, you've also got different empires around the globe at that time and different areas, uh, such as places in the Middle East, places in Asia, that would have been able to keep the time relatively well and have records dating back to that period. But as with all conspiracy theories, um, you have people that believe that half of that is fabricated, the other half is wrongly dated or translated as um, it is obviously going to be in another language using a different date and time system that they were using at that point um, in that part of the world. So there's a hundred million reasons as to why that one might be true and might not be true. Um, but I personally don't believe that one. <laughs> the harp uh, conspiracy is a bit more believable than fandom time to me. But, um, yeah, I quite like it. It's a good one. Um, I think uh, I'll leave it here for now. Um, it's a good little intro video. About 20 minutes we've got to now, so that's pretty good. Um, I say uh, this has been a combination of... Um, a new microphone, softly talking, a bit of whispering. So I hope that this video turns out well. Um, but if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if there's anything else you want me to do. Um, but yeah, hopefully I upload a bit 